you know, when you're a designer and you kind of well, represent a team, it, 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 it's easy to look back and say, oh, you know, I feel really proud. But I always struggle with that. I go back and look at so that I Fable 1 and Fable 2, and I became obsessed with this one line. And that was that more than half the people who played Fable 2 use less than half of the features in the game. And that's just wrong, man. That's just bad. That's like, that's bad workmanship. It's like schoolboy errors. And guess what? The features that they didn't really understand were the deep kind of, kind of leveling up blue, green, yellow experience and, you know, the magic combination stuff. And, you know, no one ever did that. No one ever used the, the ability in Fable, which was amazing, which was customization. And, People didn't know it, we hid it from them. You know, there, there was this amazing, incredible world, simulated world, but the, you know, the game mechanics didn't flow through. The temptation is, is to say, oh, I'll, I'll just ignore that bottom half. You know, just concentrate on the top three. But instead, we really went back to basics and we asked ourselves really fundamental questions. Why do we have things like health bars and experience? Why do we have leveling up in a 2D GUI? Why do we have customization in a 2D GUI? And, you know, the consequences of those changes were made big changes to Fable. You know, Fable 3 is all about this, it's all about power. It's all about making you feel powerful. That's a really, you know, that's what we said when we were designing the game. We want people to feel powerful. That's why you're going to be a, become a ruler. That's why we invented touch. And that's why we've redefined combat. And so the, the really thing is, how can I make people feel powerful? Well, we could actually come up with um, 200 more weapons for you to buy from shops. But I mean, the fundamental problem, there, there's a fundamental problem. Everybody ends up going towards one big weapon. That's not choice, that's not power. That's just everyone doing the same. The same is true in a lot of games that have a lot of items in them. There is one holy grail item. But that fundamentally seems old school and wrong. So we said this simple thing. We're not going to design any more new weapons. We're going to get the player to do it. We're going to give them essentially a blank canvas to paint their weapon on. And the, you know, the sharpness of the weapon, the curvature of the blade, the hooks on the side of the weapon, whether it drips with blood or glows with an ethereal glory, its name, everything is going to be down to how you use that. And that weapon will level up. It will, it will go up in distinct levels and unlock cool, uh, cool moves in there. And will allow you to sell and trade your weapon online. And it's your weapon that's unique to you. And it's like an advert for who you are. That sounds cool, man. It's, it's all about power. You know, morphing, again, this was a system that was, dis it was just kind of invented in Fable 1, slightly enhanced in Fable 2. So we went back to the drawing board there. But one of the things we introduced is this thing called extreme morphs. And that is when you get angry or excited or there's something dramatic that happens, then suddenly you're, you're, you can't hold it in anymore. You see your real self and these wings that spring out from behind you. So for example, if you're faced with a lot of enemies and you've just done a cool move, then you'll see you know, your true self come out for a split second. That's cool, man. It's all about power. It's all about making you feel powerful. It's all about me walking into your game and saying, whoa, man, you look cool. So yeah, we've got this touch system and it, it you know, is very context sensitive. It's quite hard to explain in words, but essentially it is, if I want to make you feel, feel powerful, yes, it's about weapons. It's, yes, it's about being king. But it's also about your relationship, your ability to touch things in the world. You know, and if I said to you, well, suddenly you as a human being can't touch anything, it, you'd feel diminished. So you use, you pull down the dynamic touch trigger. The rule is that what you do is modified by the, the thing that you're touching. If it's a person, we look at your relationship with that person. If you've got a romantic relationship, you may well give the person a hug. If you're courting them, you may give them a kiss. If you're married, you may get a special hug. When you're king and someone comes and asks you, hey, you know, when you, were, you promised that you would give me gold to feed the children, you can then, you're quite free to use your touch system. You go up to that person, 
You, you, you press the contact sensitive touch, you grab them by the scruff of the neck, you drag them along and you throw them in your dungeon. That makes you feel powerful, man. It's all about the power. We could do that with the A button. We could, you know, walk up to the person, press A to put them in the dungeon. That doesn't make feel emotional. It's kind of like the dog in Fable 2. It wasn't just the fact that the dog was there. It just had a meaning, it had a connection. It made you connected to the world. And it's all about that, that connection and that powerful connection with things in the world. Yeah, I mean, it, it's less about morality as it turns out. It's more about choices. And we, we, what we've tried to do, and again, this is something that was on my blacklist, is that, you know, if, for, the line was for every choice a consequence. But, you know, hey man, when's my choices and what are the consequences? Albion is your kingdom, man. You make the rules. You decide what's right and wrong. You decide what's law and not law. You decide what is punished and not punished. And you decide how, if, if people do things that you don't want them to do, how they're, uh, how they're punished. So if people aren't paying their taxes, yeah, you're completely free to go and kill them, man. You're completely free to send your army and, and to slaughter them and to become a worse tyrant than you overthrew. And, you know, history proves many, many, many times over that's exactly what happens.